Welcome! Today we're going to learn about the shell method and we in this particular video we are going to revolve our region around the y-axis. Okay so let's look at our example here. If you look at the equations in one we're going to use those equations to uh, create a boundary around a particular region and if you look at the graph that's exactly what we've done and we've come up with a striped region to represent our boundary. Okay, so how do we take that region, revolve it in this particular example around the y-axis to create a volume? And we want to use the shell method to do this. So if you look at 5, that equation, that integral, is what we have to calculate to determine our volume. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place a rectangle, and you can see in the diagram we have a purple rectangle, and that rectangle, since it's the shell method, it's critical that the rectangle is parallel to the axis of revolution, which is the y-axis, and you can see we have done that. Once we have placed that rectangle within our region, the next thing we want to do, if you look in item 2, you'll see the short end of that rectangle is a horizontal distance and that represents our dx, our change in x. And that is also key to telling us that our integral will be in terms of x and not y. So everything in our integral must be in terms of x. And we've shown that again, as I said earlier, in 5. Okay, so if you look at that integral, the next step is we want to calculate what p of x and h of x are. So let's see what they are. If you look at item 3 on the graph, you'll see that our p of x is the distance between the axis of revolution, which in our case is the y-axis, and the center of the short end of our rectangle. And since it's in terms of x, that distance is going to be an x distance. It's going to actually be x. The h of x, which is uh, in item 4, is representative of the height of our rectangle. And the way we determine that measurement, again, it will be in terms of x, but it's a vertical measurement. So we're going to uh, calculate it as top minus bottom. So the top of our rectangle touches our graph, which is square root of x. The bottom is simply 0, so the difference between them will be square root of x. And in item 6 on the left, you'll see we've listed h of x as square root of x. The next thing we want to do is calculate our limits. And if you, and by the way, it doesn't have to be in this particular order, but I'm just sharing in that order at this time. So if we want to determine our x limits, again, if you look at our region on the graph, the region is bounded by the x values 0 and 2. So in item 7 we plug in our limits, we plug in p of x and h of x into our integral, and then in item 8 we simplify uh, x times square root of x is x to the 3 halves, you simply add exponents, and then in 9 you go ahead and integrate, and in 10 we have our final answer. So let's just review some of the steps. So in item 1, you want to draw your region using the given equations. Item 2, draw a rectangle parallel to the y-axis or the axis of revolution, uh, whatever that may be. In 3, since the short side of the rectangle represents a change in x, we want to make sure the integral is in terms of x and has a dx. 4, we want to calculate our x limits. 5, calculate p of x. This is the measurement between the y-axis, or I should say the axis of revolution, it doesn't have to be the y-axis, and the middle of the short side of the rectangle. 6. Calculate h of x. This is the measurement of the height of our rectangle. 7. Substitute p of x, h of x, and x limits into our integral below, and then you solve. And that's the shell method, revolving around the x, oops, revolving around the y axis. Now go practice, practice, and practice some more.